with the flu season steadily approaching over here in Australia, you may be tempted to go and see a doctor for that <coughs> cough or that cold. On today's episode of Dr. Nora, I take you through my top tips for stethoscope etiquette to make sure you get the best out of your consultation. As a general practitioner, I see many people coming in with coughs and colds, perhaps they may be bacterial or perhaps they may be viral in nature. But each of these people coming in needs to have an examination to assess what kind of infection it is. Now, what I've noticed over time is that maybe some people don't quite know how to react when they have a stethoscope on their chest. And so I've designed this video for you guys out there to see what it's like on the other side of the stethoscope, for example, what I hear when I listen to your chest and things that you can do to make it easier for your doctor to examine you. My first tip is to be prepared. What do I mean by this? Well, I have many times seen somebody coming in with coughs and spluttering and sneezing and hopefully they're wearing a mask because that is tip number one. But um, usually they'll come in with a lot of coughing. And as a general practitioner, I always like to listen to the chest to see if there is any bacterial infections inside of the chest that need antibiotics. Now, in order for me to do a thorough examination, I will need to have listened to your back. And for many of these people, they don't quite realise that examination does involve placing the stethoscope onto the back. And to have the best result from your stethoscope, it's really ideal to have your t-shirt lifted up so that we can actually access your back and put the stethoscope onto your bare skin. Often I'll have patients coming in with a thousand and one layers because they might be feverish and they feel really cold and they're just not quite prepared to show me their back. And so it often takes a couple of minutes just to unlayer or take off their jacket, take off their scarf, take off their gloves, whatever it is they need to take off, but it takes a bit of time for them to get to their back. And so if you are presenting to your doctor with a cough or you're expecting to have an examination of your chest with a stethoscope, be prepared that you may be asked to lift up your shirt from the back so that we can have a listen to uh, your back with our stethoscope. Why is it important for us to listen to your bare skin with our stethoscope? Well, if you've ever had to listen to a stethoscope or somebody breathing in through their clothes, you'll actually notice there's a lot of crackling sounds when you listen through a stethoscope through someone's t-shirt. So as you can see, as the chest is moving up and down, the clothes are also moving up and down, and it really adds a lot of added sounds to your stethoscope hearing. And so what the impact of that is that we can't quite tell if that's a pneumonia or is it just the clothes are making a rattling noise and it's just really hard to differentiate. And so the best way to make sure that we have a clear sound from the lungs is to go onto the bare skin and you can see exactly what difference that makes. Now, often when your doctor is listening to your back, they may want to listen to your back in different places or go over the same place twice. Now, usually when we listen to your back, we listen to perhaps the left and then the right and then go up as we go along the back. Now, what this allows us to do is it allows us to compare the two sides with one another. And so, for example, if we're listening to the left lower back, we also want to compare that shortly after with the right lower back. This is often when we find crackles or crepitations, which means that there may be some signs of infection going on that can sound a bit crackly in nature. We'll then listen to the mid zones and then the upper zones to see how far, if at all, that infection has spread. Often, if I do find that somebody has got a presentation with some crepitations or some crackles to their backs, I'll go over that area once again just to confirm that I have heard the right thing. And certainly if I do hear a wheeze as well, I may go over the same place twice just to have another comparison and to make sure that I have got my diagnosis. So be prepared that if your doctor is suspecting something like a chest infection, they may go over different areas or the same area twice just to make a comparison to help make their diagnosis. My next tip is something that is actually so crucial. Now, often I see this in children or adults who perhaps are just not that compliant with an examination. And this tip is to please breathe through your mouth. It is so much harder to hear lung noises, especially when you breathe in through your nose. And this is because there is such a small amount of air entry. When you pass air through your nose, it's such a small caliber. And so there's not that much air going in. Whereas when you open your mouth, you can take a really big, deep breath. And so you can try this at home right now. Let's breathe in through our noses. And let's breathe in through our mouth. You can see how the chest just expands so much more exponentially larger than it does when you breathe in through your nose. Now, the net impact of that is that we can hear really nicely when your lungs are expanded um, versus when they're not so expanded, we can't hear so well. Often I'll see this in children who don't quite know yet how to follow instructions and they'll think that this kind of breathing is appropriate. But of course, um, with a gentle nudge from their parents, we often ask for mouth breathing. In some situations where I do get adults who also breathe through their noses and I just have to clarify with them. I say, hey, could you breathe in through your mouth, please? And that often helps to hear things a lot easier. And here is a quick comparison of nasal breathing. Now, 
versus mouth breathing. So you can hear for yourself what I hear on the other side when you're breathing in through your nose and through your mouth and how much difference it really makes. My next tip alongside breathing in through your mouth is to take nice deep breaths slowly. As I mentioned before, often I see children coming in, they go, <laughs> and they really think they're trying to help the examination by breathing in really fast. However, if you do breathe in really fast, you don't take that really nice deep breath, you're actually not filling up the whole of your lungs. And so you're filling up just maybe um, the top part of your lungs or the middle part of your lungs, but we can't quite auscultate the lower side of your lungs. So when you take a nice deep breath, it really expands the lungs and allows us to listen to the bases of the lungs, which is often where infections may lie or even fusions or fluid can lie there as well. So taking a nice deep slow breath, inhaling and exhaling will allow your doctor to have an adequate listen to your lung, enabling them to help to diagnose your situation. My next top tip for you guys is something that I wish I didn't have to say, but it happens so many times that I feel like I need to say it. And that is, please try, if you can, to refrain from coughing when you are having your lungs listened to. What this does for the person who's listening to your chest is a few things. So firstly, um, it may actually deafen them. So I've got an example for you guys for um, me listening to someone's back whilst they are coughing. And just imagine this is in your ears rather than on your mobiles or on your um, computers. This is in your ears, so really deep into your eardrums and you can hear this really loudly. Let's take a quick listen. Ow. <laughs> Often I'll get people coughing for me, and this could be because they can't help it and they might have a tickly cough, um, but don't be surprised that if you are coughing, the doctor quickly takes away their stethoscope because they don't want to damage their own hearing. In saying this, some people actually cough because they want to show you that they've got a cough, and we don't necessarily need you to cough for us whilst we're listening to your chest because it doesn't add anything to our diagnosis. Like I said, we're trying to listen to the bases of your lungs or the middles of your lungs or the top parts of your lung, and adding in a cough is not going to help us to make that diagnosis. Often people will do this when they are perhaps not as sick as they're making out and they may have another agenda. For example, they may be requesting a medical certificate and they want to prove to you that they have a cough. Now, this is not everybody, but certainly I do often see in patients who want to prove that they have a cough, so they prove that they're sick. I hope this is not the case for a lot of people, but certainly from my experience, I have seen it in a small minority of people. And certainly for those people, we don't need to hear you cough. And even if you have got a genuine cough, we don't necessarily need to hear you cough because one, it can transmit diseases and infections to those around you. And two, it doesn't help that much when we're listening to your um, lungs with the stethoscope because it can genuinely hurt our hearing. So please, if you can refrain from coughing, we would so appreciate that. My next tip from that is actually very similar, and that is, um, if you can, please refrain from talking whilst you are having your chest examined. Um, often this may be from the person, the subject who is being examined, or it may be from their counterpart or their moral support in the corner of the room. And I often see this happening. And I'll tell you, it is really, 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 really difficult to hear what you're saying when we have our stethoscope in our ears. Um, I have a good example of this right now. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like when somebody is trying to talk whilst you're auscultating and tell me if you can actually decipher what they're saying. As you can hear, it is probably near impossible to work out what that person is saying. So when we're listening to your chest, all we want you to do is breathe in, breathe out, follow the instructions and try not to talk. I've had a lot of patients that I've just had to say, hey, do you mind? Um, I just need to take a listen. Do you mind just breathing in and out? Um, but they're trying to make a conversation with me whilst I'm listening to their chest. And and maybe it's because they don't quite know how stethoscopes work and they're not too sure what it sounds like when, um, when they're talking. But certainly from our perspective, it is near impossible to understand what you're saying and it doesn't add anything to our examination as well. And going on from that, talking about the moral support in the room as well, perhaps they're not quite aware of what it sounds like when stethoscopes are being used but when they start talking about something about you know whether the person's got fever or how sick they've been we certainly cannot hear it and often what I'll do just to make a point of that is I'll stop my examination when somebody is talking I'll remove my stethoscope from my ears and I'll face the person who wants to talk to me and I'll let them finish the conversation and then I'll say okay thank you very much for adding that and go on and have a listen to the chest and that hopefully will help to educate them that it's not really possible for us to hear what you're saying whilst examining you at the same time. And hopefully by spreading this video, we might be able to um, educate more people out there so that we are getting more streamlined in our examination and more people know what it's like to hear these sounds when you're listening through a stethoscope. Because I think the biggest challenge is that 
people out there, layman people, may not actually know what it's like to hear a stethoscope in someone's ear. So hopefully this video will help to educate you, but also to enlighten you on what it's like from the other perspective. One of my next tips is sort of similar to the coughing. And this one, it often happens in patients who might accentuate, let's say, their symptoms. And I don't know if some people do this. I think maybe they just are scared when they see the doctor. Perhaps they want to prove a point to them. Maybe like they want to just show us that they're sick. But we do believe you. We know we have full trust in you that you are sick and you're coming to us for a reason. Otherwise, why would you go to the doctor? But certainly I have, a, again, a very small minority of patients that will come through my doors and try to add something. So what do I mean by that? Um, I do often see this in children because they're a bit young and they're not 100% compliant Um with examinations, but I also do see this in older people as well. And I feel like this is an important one to share with you guys because, again, it doesn't quite help with diagnosis. So this is people who come in, they might be having a cough or a cold, and you have a listen to them, but then they add noises to their uh, examination. And you might think, how do they add noises? Well, you'd be surprised. People are very imaginative. Some people may add in an, uh, a wee, so they might breathe in a particular way that helps them to restrict their airway. So they might go hey! like this, or they might go hey! You know, there's so many different noises that people um, add in when they're having their chest listened to. And I'm sure that the majority of you out there probably do not do this and think, oh my gosh, who does that? But take it from someone who sees a lot of people. Um, there is a really small minority of people who, who like to do this. And this is uh, so interesting because when you are listening to the person's back, you can actually hear that they're adding on these noises because they're not genuinely coming from the lungs, but you can hear that they're coming from the upper respiratory tract because they're just transmitted noises, is what we call them. So this is somebody who might you might be auscultating um, the lungs and then suddenly you hear these extra noises being added on from the top of their, their upper respiratory tract and it just reverberates down through your stethoscope. And so they're not real genuine noises, but they do actually cloud the auscultation process. And so when you're trying to listen to make sure that there's no um, fluid or there's no infection, you hear these extra noises and you think, oh gosh, what's going on here? So often what I'll do is I'll take a brief moment, pause the examination, ask the patient just to hopefully distract them from the situation and ask them just to breathe in through an open mouth. And often that will just clear away these wonderful noises that they've made and they'll just sound a lot more uh, normal, if you like. Of course, some people cannot help making these noises and that we can hear when we are examining a chest. So for those who are asthmatics, um, we can certainly, you can't add that. That is literally like near impossible. No matter the amount of practice you have, it is just such an impossible thing to add on. Um, and, you know, when you listen to the chest, it actually sounds really quite fascinating. You, you listen to the right and the left and you hear this wheeze that goes up and down. It's got lots of different tones. It's sporadic. It happens in different areas of the lungs. And it's actually quite beautiful to listen to, although it's very unfortunate for the person. But it's actually quite amazing how the lungs sound like that when they have got a wheeze. So certainly if you have got asthma, then there are definite signs that we can hear when we're listening to your lungs. My final tip for you guys is to not rush the practitioner. So as I said before, listening to someone's chest is a process and usually what we'll do is we'll listen to one side, then the other side, and we may go back and compare those different sides to kind of get a diagnosis and to work out what's going on. Usually it may be the support person or the subject who is being examined who might just say, what's the diagnosis, doc? They're so overexcited and eager to know what's wrong with them. They may just sort of blurt out and say, oh, what's going on? What's going on? And often as a, as a doctor um, who's listening to the chest, you know, it'll be the same situation. We have to take off the stethoscope and address them because you can't quite hear what they're saying. And, uh, you know, often you'll just have to say, I'm not too sure yet. Let me just have a quick listen and let me complete my examination. Then I'll let you know. So if you are super excited and super eager to find out what your diagnosis is, just, just wait for the doctor to complete the examination. And you'll know this because they'll put their stethoscope away. They may ask you to lower your, their t-shirt and they may walk back into their chair, which is a good telltale sign that the doctor is ready to present their findings. So I hope you guys have found this video useful. And if you yourself go to the doctor and you have your chest listened to, I'd love to know what your doctor does and, and how you feel as a patient having an examination and what your tips are as a patient, because that would be so fascinating to hear. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one. Take care and stay healthy.